Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm bringing you today uh, an encouragement for today from Proverbs 31 Ministries. I seem to like Lisa Turkierst. <laughs> I'm not sure how to say her name, but um, of all the ones I look through, I tend to like hers the most. And I do believe this is going to help somebody. So let's get started, shall we? It is Thursday, November 15th, and it's 8.38 a.m. It starts off with a, a psalm, Psalm 145.18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who... Who call on him in truth that means you're sincere you really mean it you're calling on him because you trust him you love him you believe he can do it not just to get yourself out of something you, you know what I'm saying call on him in truth okay it's hard when a situation doesn't look anything like we thought it would Boy, howdy, that's the truth. Especially if you're like me, and you like a plan. I like all involved to follow along with the plan. And I certainly don't want any unexpected deviations from or disappointments with the plan. At all. Ever. Boy, that's a choleric type A personality, isn't it? I'm not really like that so much, but I kind of like sticking to the plan myself. In reality, though, life is highly unpredictable. I keep bumping up against this as I walk through a long season of life, not looking like I thought it would. I suspect many of you are also facing circumstances that have left you feeling caught off guard. And unsure about what tomorrow holds. Maybe you're in a job where you feel unsettled. And you think that God is leading you somewhere else. But he hasn't yet revealed what's next. So for now, you walk into an office every day giving it your all. But your heart feels disconnected and your real calling unfulfilled. Okay, or maybe you've been watching everyone else in your life find love, walk down the aisle, and start the life you've dreamed of. Then a few months ago, you met someone who was everything you've been hoping for. You told your friends, this might be the one, and then... This week, you felt that person pulling back. It's hard to understand. You feel panicked, but the more you press in, the more distance you feel between the two of you. I can understand that, pausing for a moment. I used to be there. I've been there and done that three times. Now I can hardly relate. I'm so in love with Jesus. I don't even look. At, at, I can't even imagine being married again. Like Paul said, if you can remain single, as if you do marry, you will have to divide your attention between your spouse and the Lord. And he's right. You can't marry somebody and ignore them. You have to give them the time of day. You married them promising to take care of their needs, right? Whether you're the husband or the wife. Anyway. That is between you and God. I will move on. 
There are thousands of scenarios that evoke these feelings of uncertainty. Fear and exhaustion from life not being like you thought it would be. Whatever your situation is, you probably feel like you can't change it. But you still have to live through the realities of what's happening right now. Sometimes you just have to walk in your I don't know. The Lord makes it clear in his word that things will not always go as we wish they would in this life. Here is a scripture. In this world you will have trouble. John 16:33b Here's another one. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6:34b These are NIV. All this trouble is exhausting. Walking in the I don't know is scary and sometimes we can be desperate to make things easier than they really are we keep thinking if we can just get through this circumstance then life will settle down and finally the words happily ever after will scroll across the glorious scene of us skipping happily into the sunset but what if life settling down and all your disappointments going away would be the worst thing that could happen to you? What if your I don't know is helping you, not hurting you? Remember those verses we just read about troubles? Well, here they are again in the context of the full passages. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33 but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. The crucial detail for us to have peace in the middle of everything we face is to stay close to the Lord. We think we want comfort in the I don't know times of life, but comfort isn't a solution to seek. Rather, it's a byproduct we'll reap when we stay close to the Lord. I wish I could promise you that everything's going to turn out like you're hoping it will. I can't, of course. But what I can promise you is this. The assurance of Psalm 145.18 is true. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Let's cry out to God, declaring that this hard time will be a holy time, a close to God time. And let's choose to believe that there is good happening, even in these places, because wherever God is, good is being worked. You know that scripture, I'm going to add this one, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according 
to his purpose. I'll find that. Let's see, I'll do it right now. Let me go to here. See if for we no, I have Blue Letter Bible pulled up because I was checking those NIV verses with King James. They're very, very close. Okay, let's see. For we know Oh, there's a lot that start that. Okay, let's let's not start like that. Let's try this. All things work together. Let's try that one. Okay, here it is. It's Romans 8.28. I should know that one by heart by now. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. I used to wonder about that part. To those who are the called. Well, you know, I think he's called most everybody. I mean, there may be tribes and some in the Middle East and some in China and North Korea that have never heard the gospel. They have never been the called. I don't think people in America can say that. There may be a few that had isolated lives. But I doubt there's very many now that have not been called. They haven't been presented with the gospel or told about Jesus. Anyway, that's Romans 8, 28. Now let's get back to the last little bit. The little prayer. Father God, I'm forever grateful for your presence and all that you offer me as I rest in you. More than I need you to fix anything in my life. I need you. In Jesus' name, amen. The truth for today comes from Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Beautiful. And that's the end of the encouragement for today. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.